In the last module, we had been looking at regression models with unobservable variables. So, if you have unobservable variables, very often we take recourse to what are referred to as proxy variables, which stand in for the unobservable variables. So, again, sometimes what you have is even if the variable is observable, they may be contaminated with error. So, we have error contaminated variables or errors in variables. And we saw that in either of these two cases, the ordinary least squares cannot be applied because that would lead to inconsistent estimators. Not only for the variables which are contaminated with error, but also for the variables or the coefficients which are not contaminated with error. So, overall the estimation cannot be carried out because the estimators would be biased in small samples and inconsistent even for large samples. And we have seen that if we drop such variables, proxy variables, if we have errors in variables and we drop these variables, even then there would be some bias in the model, so, bias in the parameters that of the other variables that are there in the model. So, we cannot get rid of this problem by using the OLS in one way or the other. In this and the next lecture, we will be talking about methods for estimation when there is the presence of either proxy variables or there are errors in variables. There are primarily two methods for estimating the parameters of a model which has either proxy variables or error contaminated variables. So, as we saw the least squares are ruled out, but then we can use the maximum likelihood method and the second method that we will be discussing later would be the instrumental variable technique. In today's lecture, we will be looking at the maximum likelihood method of estimating the parameters in the presence of proxy variables or errors in variables. Now, let us illustrate the problem through a two variable model. So, let the actual model be y i star is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i star plus u i. u i is the model error and y i stars and beta x i star are the true values of the response and the explanatory variables respectively. So, this is the actual model that we want to study. Now, both this y i star and x i star cannot be observed as it is. So, what we observe is y i which is y i star plus b i, b i is an error. So, y i is error contaminated, y i star is true and y i is error contaminated. Similarly, instead of x i star, we observe x i and x i again is error contaminated, the error in this case being w i. So, ultimately what we observe is the model y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i. Now, this error epsilon i actually is composed of the model error u i plus v i minus beta 1 w i. Remember, this is the reason why this x i and epsilon i gets correlated and we have a problem of inconsistency if we are using the OLS estimator. Now, since we are using the maximum likelihood estimator, we need to make certain distributional assumptions of the errors. Let us assume that the u i is at i i d normal 0 sigma u square, the v i s are i i d normal 0 sigma v square and the w i s are i i d normal 0 sigma w square. We will also assume that x i star itself is stochastic. Of course, if it is non stochastic we can always take it out, but let us take the more general case of x i star being stochastic and we will assume that x i star is also normal, it has a mean mu and its variance is sigma x star square. And we will assume that this u i, b i, w i and x i star are all 
independent of each other. So, there is no correlation between the different errors and also no correlation with the explanatory variable. Now, given this setup, observe that x i is x i star plus w i that is what we have already. But if you look at y i and we can write y i in terms of x i star in that case y i will be equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i star plus u i plus v i. And under the assumption of normality because all these variables now you see that x i and y i are written in terms of all the variables whose distributions we know. So, under the normality assumption we have x i and y i jointly distributed as a bivariate normal with mean of x being mu, mean of y being beta naught plus beta 1 mu, variance of x being sigma x star square plus sigma w square, mean of y being beta 1 square sigma x star square plus sigma u square plus sigma v square all this comes from this x i and y i. And if you take the covariance between x i and y i it comes out to be beta 1 sigma x star square. So, we get a normal bivariate normal distribution with these as the parameters. Now, in the usual case if we have x i y i as a bivariate normal with mean mu x mu y sigma x square sigma y square and rho we can write the standard log likelihood as minus of n log twice pi minus n by 2 log of sigma x square sigma y square 1 minus rho square to the power of half minus half summation i equal to 1 to n y i minus mu x by sigma x whole square plus y i minus mu y by sigma y whole square minus twice rho x i minus mu x by sigma x into y i minus mu y by sigma y. And by standard procedures you know that the ML estimates would come out as mu hat x would be x bar, mu hat y would be y bar which are the sample mean and the sample mean of x and y respectively. Sigma x square would be the sample variance for x s x x, sigma y square would be the sample variance of y which is s y y and sigma x y would be the sample covariance s x y. Remember that s x s and s y y as well as s x y all will have a denominator of n. So, it is divided by n and not by n minus 1. We know that the ML estimates are not going to be unbiased. So, there will be a this n minus 1 is taken for this unbiasedness, but the ML estimates has a divisor of n. Also notice something that even if we had not assumed normality and if you had been doing the method of moments these are exactly the estimators of these parameters that would have come. So, what we are doing basically is we are equating the sample moments with the population moments. So, the moment estimators also would have led us to the same estimates in this case. So, this is a standard result that we have from the bivariate normal distribution and its ML estimates. Let us look, go back and look at our problem. So, if we look at what is mu x for us, the mean of x is mu. So, mu must be equal to x bar that is the first equation. Mean of y is beta naught plus beta 1 mu. So, that must be equal to y bar. Variance of x is sigma x star square plus sigma w square that must be equal to s x x. Similarly, sigma u square plus sigma v square plus beta 1 square sigma x star square must be equal to s y y. And finally, the covariance beta 1 sigma x star square would be equal to the sample covariance s x y. So, what we have here is there are 5 equations. But if you look at the number of parameters, you have mu, beta naught, beta 1, sigma x star square, sigma w square, sigma u square and sigma v square. So, we have 7 parameters or 7 unknowns. 
but then we cannot solve the seven unknowns from this five equations. Of course, we will need to put some restrictions so that we can get a solution to this unknowns and the restrictions must be two so that we can get unique solutions. Now, before we go and look at the type of restrictions that we would need to put in, notice something, notice the fourth equation here. You will find that in the fourth equation, we have sigma u square plus sigma v square and these two terms do not come in anywhere else. So, what happens is that we cannot eliminate one and estimate the other. So, whenever we try and estimate this from the fourth equation, suppose we know s, we know s y y, suppose we know beta 1 and suppose we know sigma x star square. So, s y y minus beta 1 hat square sigma x star square that will give us sigma u square plus sigma v square and we will be unable to separate these two. So, we cannot estimate these two separately. Hence, what is generally done is that we assume that sigma u square is equal to 0 and what does that mean? It means that the mind you sigma u is the variance of the model error. So, we are assuming that the true model is exact, it does not have an error and when we look at the observed model, the error comes in primarily through the y error that is sigma v or rather v and it comes in through w as well. So, we will assume that the true model is error free and hence the number of parameters now reduces by 1. So, we have still 5 equations, but we have 6 unknowns. So, we still need one other restriction to make. So, let us look at what type of restrictions we have. Generally, four very standard restrictions that are made. The first of this is we assume that sigma w square is equal to a constant a. What is sigma w square? So, we are saying that we know the error variance for the explanatory variable. If we know sigma w square equal to a, then you can use equation 3 and put this a value to get sigma x star square hat as x s x x minus a. And then if we use this in equation 5, then we have beta 1 hat is equal to s x y by s x x minus a. And once we get beta 1 hat, we get all the remaining terms. In fact, from 4 we get sigma b square is equal to s y y minus beta 1 hat square sigma x star hat square. And of course, we do not need to look for mu separately because the first equation it gives us mu hat is x bar always it is already defined. And if you look at the second equation knowing beta 1 hat beta naught hat would be y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar because mu is x bar. So, if we take the condition that sigma w square is equal to a, we can estimate all the other parameters. Let us look at the second case. Here, we will assume that sigma v square is known to us and it is equal to b. What is sigma v square? It is the variance of the response or the error in the response. Then from 4, using this sigma v square equal to b, we get that beta 1 square sigma x star square is equal to s y y minus b. And then dividing 4 by 5, beta 1 hat turns out to be s y y minus b by s x y. And then of course, once you have got your beta 1 hat as before, you can get the other terms as well. So, it will be precisely as before. Just notice something, if in either case, say sigma x sigma w square is equal to 0. If a is 0, that means we have a x variable which is not contaminated with error and you can see that in that case we go back to the usual regression estimates. Similarly, if b is equal to 0, we will have a response which is not contaminated with error and we will be going back not exactly to the same estimates because mind you, the problem comes in when you have errors in the x variable 
but we can use this method to get an estimate of beta 1 hat. But for the first case of course, you would be going back to a, you can use the ordinary squares. Let us look at the third case. Sigma x star square by sigma x square is equal to c and c is a known constant which is less than 1. Now, why is it less than 1? This is because sigma x square the denominator is primarily the sum of sigma x star square plus sigma w square. So, this c is equal to sigma x star square by sigma x star square plus sigma w square and hence must be less than 1. And if you solve this, we will find that sigma w square would come out to be 1 minus c by c into sigma x star square. Now, one advantage of this third case over the first and the second is that in the first and second case, we have to have some idea of what the error variance is like and very often this is difficult to gauge. In the third case, we are not saying exactly what the variances are to be like. We are only saying that sigma x star square by sigma x square is c. Suppose c is 0 0.8. We'll say that 20 percent of the variability is because of the error sigma w square and 80 percent because of the true value. So, we are just saying how much of the true value is contained in the variable that we are measuring and what proportion of it is error. So, we are talking in terms of proportionality and hence it is easier to conceive than the exact absolute value of this variance is being equal to some particular value. Now, let us come back to this. We have sigma w square is equal to 1 minus c by c sigma x star square. And if we use 3 and substitute sigma w square there, then we have sigma x star square coming out as c times s x x. And from 4 or in this case rather it comes from 5 beta 1 hat with the sigma x star square already obtained, it comes out to be s x y by c x x. So, once we have got beta 1 hat, we can get the other parameters as before and hence we can get estimates of all the 6 parameters. Now, let us come to the fourth case. In the fourth case, we assume that sigma v square by sigma w square is equal to some known constant lambda. Now, again this is a plausible assumption and we are saying that the error variables for the response by that variance for the explanatory variable, this proportion is known to us. So, we are not giving exact values of sigma v square, sigma w square. We are only saying that one is equal to the other or maybe twice the other etcetera. So, it is just a proportionality idea that we are using and this is much more easier to conceive than getting the exact values of this variances. Now, once we can assume this very often the data tells us what it should be like, but once we can assume this if we use and substitute sigma v square in equation 4, then writing sigma v square as lambda times sigma w square we can get this as lambda sigma w square plus beta 1 square sigma x star square is equal to s y y. Now, subtracting lambda times equation 3 from this we have beta 1 square minus lambda times sigma x star square is equal to s y y minus lambda times s x x. And then if we use 5 to replace the sigma x star square in this equation, we have beta 1 square minus lambda s x y by beta 1 is equal to s y y minus lambda into s x x. And this would imply that if you take the beta 1 in the denominator on the right hand side, bring all the terms to the left hand side, we have s x y into beta 1 square minus s y y minus lambda s x x whole thing into beta 1 minus lambda s x y which is equal to 0. So, you notice that this is a quadratic in beta 1 and we can solve this quadratic and get estimates of beta 1. And this comes out as beta 1 hat is equal to 
Remember the formula it is minus if you have a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, then the solution should be minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 a c by twice a. So, in this case beta 1 hat would be s y y minus lambda s x x plus minus square root of s y y minus lambda s x x whole square plus 4 lambda s x y square divided by twice s x y. So, we get two solutions. Notice that in the numerator just concentrate on the numerator. If you look at the term within the square root, it is s y y minus lambda s x x whole thing square plus 4 times lambda which is positive be being the ratio of two variances into s x y square which is again positive. So, we have the square term plus a positive term and if you look at the first term, the first term is the square of the first term within the square root. So, the square root should be coming out to be because it has a positive term attached to it would come out to be larger than the first term. So, one of the solutions should be negative because when you subtract the larger term it will give you a negative value and the other term you are just adding it. So, it will be positive. So, one of the terms is going to be negative and the other term is going to be positive. So, which of the two solutions of beta 1 hat should you be taking? The negative one or the positive one? In this case it is easy to understand that remember what is beta 1? Beta 1 is the slope, slope of the regression of y on x. Now, if y is increasing with x then the slope is going to be positive and if y is decreasing with x as x increases then this slope is going to be negative. But then if y is increasing with x covariance s x y would be positive. If it is inversely related then s x y is going to be negative and we have the s x y value. So, if s x y is positive take the positive value of solution of beta 1. If s x y is negative take the negative solution of beta 1 and that would be the solution of beta 1 that you get from this quadratic and that would be the one that you should be using. So, once again if you get beta 1 then you can get the remaining parameters and you can solve all the equations and get all the unknowns. So, this is, these are four cases that we have been looking at. There may be some other cases that you have in particular situations, but primarily the two most popular methods is to make assumptions the either the fourth case or sometimes the third case as well. So, you either make an assumption on the ratio of the two error variances or on the variance of the true value of x by the variance of the actual observed value of x because these are proportionality type of restrictions and it is easier to make this and you can solve your betas. And you know that if you get your maximum likelihood estimators here all the properties of the maximum likelihood estimator would hold in either of the two cases. In today's module we had been discussing methods of estimating the parameters in the presence of either proxy variables or in the presence of error contaminated variables. There are two methods that we generally use. One is the usual maximum likelihood method and the other is the errors or the instrumental variables. Today we discuss the maximum likelihood method and we saw that even the direct application of the maximum likelihood method does not yield all the parameters because there are too many parameters compared to the number of equations that we get and we need to put some restrictions. We saw how we can actually reasonably get some restrictions and estimate the maximum likelihood parameters through the maximum likelihood method.